Hello and welcome back to SAFC Fan TV. Following a wonderful week on your side, we finally got one over on our bogey team, Burton Albion, and now we are up against another bogey team, unfortunately. However, if we win this game, it just adds that extra confidence um, that we seem to have at the moment. And joining me to preview the game and give us a little bit of insight into the opposition is Fleetwood Town fan, the man behind the YouTube channel, Con Cod's Vlogs. It's Ben Knappen, and here's what me and Ben had to say in our little chat. All right, I'm here with Ben. Um, ben, how are you doing on this fine Sunday morning? Doing good, mate, until you asked me to come on and speak about Fleetwood. Um, not all is well at the moment, but um, thank you for having me on the channel again, mate. And uh, should be a good, uh, listen, we've had uh, a lot happen to both football clubs since we met, what, two months ago, three months ago. So I think both clubs have changed massively. Yeah, it's been a um, very hectic few months, like, been a hectic week, but we've had a really successful past week. Anyway, another vote on um, so obviously Joey Barton um, got sacked, um, or, or rather left the club, or, or however however it was, um, not too long ago. But I seen that you were actually quite pleased with that and thought that you know he wasn't getting the best out of the players. Do you know why why he went in the end? I disagree with I did I, I didn't I didn't want him to leave the football club. I felt he needed to leave for his own good and our own good at the end of the year. Like that was always my only ask. I, I've never ever ask for a manager to leave the football club. That is one thing I'll never say because I'm never going to say someone should lose his job because, you know, I'm not that type of, you know, person. And then I don't think I'm in the right, you know, capacity as, you know, only a fan and a vlogger to ask someone to lose a job. But um, it wasn't more, the you know, it wasn't really the results. The performances were slipping and a couple of things had gone on, obviously, he left one of the, our, best, our best goalkeeper, one of the best goalkeepers in the league, in my opinion. Um, brought someone else in, offered to pay his wages instead of paying Cairns. I don't think that helped the players. Um, but I think, I, I think obviously it needed to happen. And I wish Joey nothing but the best. He was superb with me, and he'll be in another managerial role very soon. And Sam Grayson's come in, and you know. You look at his past club, Sunderland, you know, who's done well at Sunderland since, you know, Sam Allardyce. That's what I asked myself. Um, so, yeah, did he do well? Did Chris Coleman do any better? Not really. And then you've got Jack Ross. Did he do, you know, do, do a lot? And then you've got Phil Parkinson. So, you know, then he did not so well at Bradford. He got offered to stay there, but didn't take it. Blackpool, there was huge pressure on his shoulder after the takeover that had happened. And, you know, he spent quite a bit of money. Didn't quite work out there. He's here till the end of the year. Hopefully, he can keep us about mid table. Then I, I'd like to move on in the summer. Why have Fleetwood dropped off so much? Because it was, it was only at the start of the season. I think we were both looking at you, both looking at your side as a team that was definitely going to get in the playoffs or at least going to be up there challenging in the kind of top eight, eight teams in the league. Well, he's been in here four games now, Grayson, and uh, it was an, an interim before that in Simon Wiles. And um, a good young coach, I like him a lot. But it can be really hard when you've taken over. It's the same tactics, really. You know what I mean? It's like the same message. Sometimes it can have a positive effect. Obviously, he's younger than some of their players. So, you know, we give him that opportunity. Grayson's come in. We have changed the formation to a back three now. We look better. The only thing is it's the same tactics every game and it will get worked out. I'll come back on this channel in, you know, next time we play you possibly. And I'll be probably talking about... You know, it's all the same tactics. Same with the yeah, we are, mate. We are, you know. Uh, promotion tour, eh? Promotion tour. Uh, no, but it is the same similar tactics, you know what I mean, where balls down the side, cross into the box, and it's okay for a while, but see how long that lasts. You know, if you offer me, what, what was it? Uh, what you Five points out of his first 12 in Bristol Rovers, Charlton, Doncaster and Plymouth, I probably would have taken it. I probably would have said the losses have come to either the one of Doncaster and Charlton, where we've got four points out of and we deserved to win yesterday. We were, you know, we were the miles better team. Yeah. Um, what are your main strengths as a team? Then? What have we got to be concerned about uh, going, going into our game? Defensively, I think we're really good. Um, you know, even though we've been on a bad run, I think in 15 games for a side that, you know, have only picked up what, Nine, what, 10 or 11 points. We've, you know, we've got, I think it's 12 goals conceded, which is a decent record. You know, we were conceding nil or one. Um, hopefully we can have a nil, you know, and a win. That'd be great. Um, we are starting to create more chances now. 
which is good. Um, we were before, and now you know we look a much better team for it. But we just need to convert them. Paddy Madden and Vassell are looking better. The midfield looking stronger. So hopefully we can come to the same light and give you a a good game. And it's nearly a year on since we uh, last played at the same light, uh, which I, I honestly still believe if we'd have won that game, I reckon we'd be in the championship now. Yeah, that was one of the most frustrating 90 minutes of my life, like that game. Like, he's got quite an early goal, didn't you, with, with Paddy Madden scoring in the fifth minute? And then we didn't score on the 97th, I think it was. But in between that, those 92 minutes of, 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 of game time, it was, I think we were just peppering and peppering you, but he was just sat on your edge of your box clear, and, then, and it worked. To, and right, it right did work, and yeah. And, um, it did work. And- I was just going to say, like, a, a lot of teams in League One get bad press, especially off Sunderland fans. Um, for just playing such a defensive game, trying to keep a clean sheet. But it, it works, you know, a lot of the time, and he's nearly got away with all three points. He did, and it, obviously, Mikhail, a little bit of magic early on, you know, dancing feet, um, getting the goal. He was unbelievable when he came in on loan. Not quite hit the highs of, the, you know, since coming in on loan this year. Yeah? And then, you know, it's, I'll be honest with you, Sunderland... I don't remember saying, oh, my God, what a save by Alex Cairns in that game. I don't. You had a lot of possession. It was just balls into the box or yeah. having pot shots from 30 yards out. And, um, you know, but, you know, we were unlucky that day. But I still reckon the defensive display, when you hold on for that long, you, you, you know, you deserve three points. And we were unlucky. Maybe, mate. I mean, we didn't really create much, but um, we certainly tried and tried and tried. But we had a problem in a parking somewhere. We never really had any any plan B. Um, so I guess uh, one of the funny final questions would be, where do you, where do you see Fleetwood finishing this season? Do you think you can actually turn it around and sneak into the playoffs? Or is mid-table good enough and that's all you can really get? Mid-table, I'll take now, mate, if I'm honest with you. Um, it was always going to be a weird season. and Even early on, I'll be honest with you, I never thought we'd get into the playoffs because he just felt something was missing even under bar. And even when we were winning... We just had a little bit in, too much inconsistent to get into the playoffs. But I'll take it, you know, a top 12 finish, top 13 finish. You can go in a little bit of run. We've got a tough, you know, tough run of games now. Sunderland, Accrington, Lincoln, Shrewsbury. So, you know, they're three sides on the side that are really picking up under a new manager. That if we can get maybe six points out of them, I'll, I'll be over the moon. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's always here to get one over, one over us, especially at the stage in my life. Uh, we haven't beat us at home yet, and I think we've only actually beaten us once uh, in the league. Is it when uh, in our in our very first season the away fixture? So you you's already a bogey team for us. I mean, we beat. Uh... We won that man. We won that two one. Oh Never yeah, forget, actually, I... I don't I don't know why I said that. Um, I don't I don't know where that came from. <laughs> um, Never anyway. beaten us, son. Even in the Papa John's. Ah, uh, you, you just came away with all three points. It tends to be a draw when we play each other, but you's already a bogey team for us. I think since you came down to League One and. Um, and but we managed to beat the bogey team yesterday, Burton Albion 3 0. So hopefully, we're going to have a, a similar result. And um, speaking of, then I'm going to ask you a prediction for the game. Um, confident at all? Um, Sunderland are in good form, they're in good settle right now. But one thing I'll say about Sunderland, they're either unbelievable, like the, you know, a win yesterday, a win over Lincoln, you know, or they're absolutely awful. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think they're any middle ground and you know you've got to have that if you want to go up I do believe Sunderland will get into the playoffs do I believe they'll go up yeah. I'm not quite sure yet yeah. I think my top two you know are you know uns- unsettled yet because you know so many sides are dropping points yeah. right now and uh, I think this is your ideal opportunity to get three points I think you'll beat us I'll be honest with you um, I'll go 2-0 to Sunderland but it's going to be a tough game and um, I'm just hoping that we can go there with some fight, go for it, and don't sit back. But I'd love it if Grayson went to Sunderland, beat him, and went to and Blackpool and beat him. That'd just be class. Honestly, I, I I couldn't stand getting beat by Simon Grayson. I know you're saying that a lot of managers haven't succeeded at Sunderland, but I haven't seen very managers come come to the stage light and have less of an idea about the squad and the team. It's so, so seen from my perspective as a fan than Grayson. He just seemed to have absolutely no idea what he was doing. Um, so I, I would, it would really, really, it would really hit differently. Like if Grayson was to beat us, uh, ask myself. I think I'll go for a two 0 win as well. Um, you know everything's coming up Sunderland the last week or so. 
Uh, we, we've managed to avoid a potential banana skin. I think all we need is a kind of good uh, run of ten to fifteen games, and we will we will get into that top two. I think we've, we've got we've got all, all the ability in the world to do it. Uh, but hopefully, this can be another step towards that. Ben, thank you for coming on. No worries, Jack. Thank you as always. A few very interesting points raised there by Ben. Uh, first and foremost, them being quite a one-dimensional side. If you can tactically figure teams like that out, then often you just stop them from scoring. We kind of experienced that under Phil Partons, and I think I would expect another cobbled together defence, a back three or a back four. We, we don't really know how Johnson's going to do it. Um, he might go exactly the same as Burton Abbey, and he might not, but with Wright injured and McFadden in a doubt as well, um, we, you could expect anything going into this game. So I would imagine it'll be another cobbled together defence um, with the likes of 09, McFadden, maybe even Power coming in if it's a back four. Sanderson will definitely be in there, but it'll be another cobbled together defence and um, we won't be um, we, we, we don't have a plethora of options defensively is what I'm saying I think this could be a really another really important game I said that I said that about Burton I said it could make or break our season and I think it's going to be a similar story with Fleetwood you know another bogey team um, if we do get one over them it will be quite as sweet as if Joey Barton was the manager um, that would have just made it a little bit nicer but you know they're another bogey team and if we pick up another three points and we get another win, it just adds that extra momentum and confidence that we seem to have going forward. Um, and I really, really hope that we do because I think this could be the start of a really, we could be seeing the start of a really, really good run. And I hope Fleetwood can just be another kind of um, another another game to facilitate that run. Um, join us for the live stream. I believe we'll be going live thirty minutes before kick off. I'm not sure who'll be uh, on the live stream. Not even sure if I'll be on there myself. Um, but make sure you tune in thirty minutes before kick off, and we'll be going through everything um, to do with the game. Please like the video if you haven't already and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you enjoy this type of content. We go live for every game as well as our normal shows. Massive thank you to Ben uh, for joining me once again and uh, thank you everyone for watching and uh, we, let's hope we can be fleet where I'll go over a 2-0 Sunderland win.